On Channel 2, we now have Gardener's World. It's now 8pm and time to meet the Thames men. How are I mean, you? Can we go back to being unemployed magicians? It was so much no, more fun. No, 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 we're moving on from that. We're too, too mature, you know? We're coming up to the end of Prog Week, and as such, I'm just easing into this. Gen- George, how are you, sir? <laughs> I'm very well, sir. No, I, I, actually, this has been a fascinating week. It's been amazing. I'm George. I'm in Los Angeles. Sorry, intro. I'm Alex, and I'm in San Francisco. You're right, George. It has been amazing, hasn't it? They're really interesting. So so here you come to the Thamesman. Uh, we are the low-budget, high-value um sometime reaction channel and we do try and get to the music we just get confused sometimes don't we well you know we like to have a bit of a chat it's it, did, I tell you about my, did i tell you about my composting machine <laughs> we had it on video your compost have you still got it i do but i found out it doesn't make compost what does it make it just dehydrates it and crushes it up <laughs> and then what do you do with it and then i put it in the garden but it just goes rock solid if you put water on it but anyway that you see, again, we're getting way late, but don't ever buy a Lomi machine. So, as we said, we're not sponsored, not sponsored by Lomi. That's our yeah, channel. Yep. Yeah. So, by Lomi, but there you go. So, <laughs> we are in the middle of Prog Week. It has been fascinating. And the reason why it's been fascinating is Prog, it seems, from our dipping a toe in, seems to be a hotbed for just millions of other genres to spin out of. Yeah. I mean, they're pushing the boundaries. And 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 uh, you know I think I think sometimes it's had a bad reputation and and we've been suckered into that and we've uh, like uh, I mean the, all these tracks we're looking to early seventies you know we're we're looking at stuff that is early on in the whole genre um, and today is a big one then so today we are doing yes and I don't know I know nothing about yes I have never heard one note of yes being played and again i think why well, it's because it got such a bad rap when i grew up i was listening to motorhead and and whatever, and the, these bands were just going to be for thin white kids who were really geeky or whatever and i just stayed away from it going back to it now they were onto something I, but I, haven't heard, <laughs> I haven't heard a note because you're a thin white kid that's why i am a thin <laughs> white kid as well but you know i had uh, i had patches but yeah, agreed. But they they were definitely uh, I, I I have never heard I've never heard one note by Yes. Okay. Well, I, I obviously heard. Do, do you own an album by Yes? Nope, not at all. No. Nope. Exactly. Uh, which is amazing because that I've heard the name so many times, but somehow just sort of dodged it the whole time, and and I don't really know why. So, uh, but anyway, well, let's find out what we've been missing, and and yep. this is we've got some good notes again. So. Um, do you want me to read the notes? Yes, please. Do the words. Uh, do the words. So we're doing yes. Uh, so the, the track is from 1971. It's Roundabout. Uh, and ironically, after some success, but no breakthrough, they saw King Crimson play, which was the beginning of our week, which is nice full circle, and decided they needed to be a bit more serious in their efforts. Uh, Fragile, the fourth album, lineup of John Anderson on vocals, Steve Howe on guitar, Chris Squire on bass, who's an amazing bass player, uh, uh, Rick Wakeman on keyboards. Everyone knows of Rick Wakeman, of course. Yeah, he is amazing. Uh, yeah, uh, Bill, Bill Bruford on drums. Provided them with a hit in Roundabout. The follow-up album, Close to the Edge, and Song of the Same Title, often regarded as the best prog rock album and song of all time. Uh, to my mind, uh, Yes might be the single most important of all the progressive rock bands, said Rush's bass player, Geddy Lee. So, Long-term Yes drummer Alan White, who replaced Burford in 72, died on May the 26th. He also drummed with both Lennon and Harrison's first solo album. Wow. That's cool. That is super cool that he did yeah. that. I mean, so, I think there's been no doubt about the quality of the musicians in this prog week. Yeah, yeah, because they all span off and all did huge things independently. Yeah. And, and I mean, I know this is just the origins, but they it seems, it seems to be made of a tapestry of classical and rock and this and that. But also, at the same time, if it was a combination of all these, they've also span out so much as well. 
Well, I mean, we did a lot of uh, Rush tracks, haven't we? And, and they're prog, without a question. You know, three guys who are who are sort of insanely good musicians and sort of pushing their boundaries of what what is possible. And so I, you know, I think we've we've absolutely been across the genre, but this is the beginnings of it, where it came from, and why is new to us. So the beginnings of prog. All right, seventy one. Yes, roundabout. I know nothing. I am actually really, really looking forward to this yeah. because, like you, I've heard their name so many times. Yep. Yeah. yeah, let's do it. Are you ready, sir? I am, sir. Three, two, one, go.
now that was prong. Wow. What do you think? They're so complex. Mm -hmm. You know, well, the, the musicianship is just out of this world. I mean, when when he when the guitarist was doing the really you know those really super fast bits, Wakeman was doing the same pattern on his left hand. Rick Wakeman, for me, Rick Wakeman was the high point of that track. Like he was just um, you say that, but but he he did a he did a Hammond solo, which was amazing. But the Hammond for me is nineteen seventies. So, but he was doing a, a you know I thought the guitarist. Was the one he the Waitman would do a straight up Hammond solo, but the guitarist would then do something really peculiar on the run. Right, right, yeah, okay. I, which was yeah, absolutely. The guitarist but, was amazing. But, uh, and <clears throat> your right hand's always your strong hand on the piano. Waitman was doing the same pattern on his left hand. Yeah, on the that's... bass note. On the it was like how 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 you know that was just absolutely brilliant. And it was, I mean, if 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 anything for me, that track, I, I was slightly distracted by the quality of the track in terms of like the audio. Like I'd love to hear that track, like the album studio version, uh, because I was slightly just, I mean, this is, I think it was a Rainbow Theatre in London. It was recorded uh, and, it, you know, amazing live track, but it was a bit harsh on the recording. I'd love to have heard like a studio version of that, I think. You're absolutely right. And that's a really good point. So maybe we should go and listen to Yes in the studio, because if you're going to have something so complex, to actually pick it apart and hear what everyone is doing, which is what you want to do and be amazed to see how they put it all together, you can't really do that on a, you know, on a live track of that quality. Sometimes you can. I mean, I think I just think that recording was not, I mean, great footage to see. Great to see who they are and what they're doing. And Alex, they had the capes. They did have the capes. They really did have the capes. They were the capes. They had the capes there, didn't they? So just as you said, you know, prog with capes. Yeah, God, that, that, that. And actually, out of all the bands that I went through, that was, that we've listened to this week, that's the one I want to go back and listen to again. Oh, really? Okay. I, I, the one I think I want to listen to most is King Crimson. I think that was the, again, I, again, I want to hear album versions of King Crimson. I that, think that, that might. Be... The, you just hit it on the head. I want to listen to an album version because yeah. if they can separate all the tracks, yeah, mainly, yeah, the, it's gonna, it will go to another level. It'll be yeah. phenomenal. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think you're right there. But I mean, fantastic. I like just the level of musicianship of everyone we've seen this week is is kind of ridiculous you know and i think that's that's the thing to take away yeah the best of the best yeah in musicianship seem to be doing prog at that moment right. and because then and then you can pick apart all the people from wakeman to from peter gabriel to lemmy to all the bands that when they split up they all spawned huge bands thereafter yep absolutely every single one of them and and I mean, okay, put you on the spot. Out of the five tracks you've had this week, if you had to pick, which was your best, which was it be? Well, it was a clear winner for me. It was the uh, fanfare. Because, oh, yeah, Emerson, Lake and Palmer. Yeah, I, fanfare. Because, from because it was very accessible. Yeah. Because it was three of them, and the bass, was, and it was just, and I'd never seen that. It was great. How about you? I was going to say exactly the same because it was just that that sort of combination of keyboards and bass there was astounding. Just uh, like just the the, the 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 hits and the runs and stuff was amazing. So. But 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 I'm, am I'm amazed by all of them. The most interesting one was the King Crimson because yeah because it, it was the hardest one to listen to, but it had mo it had more elements of future. But it looked so far in the future. Yep. Of when it was recorded, 1969. It was looking at 1979. Yeah, 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 no, absolutely. All of them have been fascinating, though. Great choice. And thank you, Chris. That was awesome. So, yeah, and, and thank you. I mean, like, if you're like us and you stayed, you, you know, you were scared of Prog Week, and um, it, it, you, you probably know these bands, and that's why you're watching, and we're, it, it's our first genre in. So, um, please leave comments down what we should be doing next but if you haven't heard these bands 
like us also leave down there what was your favorite out of the five yeah i think that'd be really interesting don't just sort of comment on you know if you if you know the genre i'd love to hear from people who don't know the genre like us and see what your thoughts are that'd be really interesting so yeah yeah but it's a deep 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 well that i can see that when you have time and when you're younger that's all you do have yeah that you could you could get into one of these bands and just go deep down the well because they are so incredibly complex it's fun. it's just excellent yeah brilliant really i'm really glad we did this week that was yeah. like uh went into it with some trepidation but i'm happy that absolutely happy we did it so great thank you very much like subscribe we've got a lot more coming up we've got aussie week three coming up we've just chucked out one curated week if you've got a curated week of a band you'd like please email us it's down there put your five tracks with uh, the links that you want and your notes and um, you know it gets considered and we've uh, we pick them up quite regularly yeah we got um we got scar week now coming up scar week that's going to be an interesting one so that is going to be really interesting yeah great all right thank you thank you see you on the flip side